Hello, everybody. It's Jody Franklin, and I'm here today with Reed Davis, who is the founder of Functional Diagnostics Nutrition, FDN. And I know this uh, topic today has got a lot of attention from you all because so many of us are skittish around lab work. Is it is it in scope? Is it not in scope? Can I do it? Can I not do it? I can't get my hands on any. And Reed has some great thoughts on this, uh, great advice on it. And I can't wait to have him answer all your questions about it. And I always say, I wish I'd known about um, your school, Reed, because I wanted to learn functional medicine at first. And I sort of went to a basic good, you know, good program health coach school, but I didn't know about learning functional medicine until a little later. And um, what's nice about your school is that there's no prerequisites in terms of um, already knowing medical um, knowledge or anything like that. It's, it's really a solid program that I have a lot of friends that have gone through and highly recommend it. But I also wanted to say that for this group, Reed is offering um, $750 off his program for everybody in this group. And I'm going to have Terry put the code in the, in the comments below this thread and on this Zoom recording here. So you all can take advantage of it if you're interested in the program. But Reed, thank you so much for coming on. It's such an honor to have you on today. And mine too. I love you and your group and you have great background and training as do most of our uh, people. You said there's no prerequisites because I want to teach the whole world and everybody. But most of our graduates, uh, they do have some kind of college college degree, some kind of additional certificate, something they've already tried, like personal training. Nutrition is huge, of course. All the nutrition and health coaching schools that are out there, they're all doing a wonderful job. We're kind of the next step. And so, again, they've got college degrees. Uh, they've got a certificate or two. They have plenty of experience. They've been out in the field, and they're looking for something that's going to give them an edge. And that's how they finally land in, in our door. Right. So you're saying your group is pretty educated, but by the same token, you don't have to apply to get in, correct? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, you, there's an application process. We would like to oh, there is. Okay. screen out people who uh, maybe it's not right for them. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't say it's right for everybody. It's a very robust course. There's a, quite a bit of anatomy, physiology, biochemistry. And, you know, so there's some something to learn. Uh, but most people are They've got a little nerd in them. If you have a little nerd in you, you're going to love it. Uh, it's also very exciting. It's presented in an amazing way. I mean, I'm not here to sell the course. I'm just right. saying <laughs> that, uh, but yes, yeah, since you asked, it's it's pretty remarkable if I do say so myself. <laughs> I'm glad you, I'm glad you clarified that. And I think any functional medicine training that all our, the people in the group can get only makes us better as coaches. And I know it, it, for me, um, learning functional medicine changed everything for me from kind of trying to really beg to get clients to having people, you know, wait list to work with me, people coming and, and expanding my practice, adding new practitioners to my practice so that I can expand. And um, it's made a big difference in just the level it's up leveled me so much. It's been huge. But anyway, let's mm -hmm. talk about the lab work piece because I have um, uh, dozens of questions here about you know, is, you know, so many people say, well, it's not in my scope to look at lab work. It's not in, are we supposed to look at lab work? Some people are afraid to look at lab work and they don't have the education on the lab work. So I agree. If you don't have the education on it, you probably shouldn't be looking at it, but can you tell us a little bit about lab work and, and why you think it's essential for, or, or important for health coaches to know and understand? It's important to state first, and yeah, I'll answer all the questions to the best of my ability to straight forward. You know, I started back in 1999. I was actually in environmental law, mm -hmm. and I went over to the wellness industry. I became, you know, I was out saving the planet, air, birds, water, trees, bees, and I noticed how bad things were for them. And I started wondering about people and, well, what about people, you know, including me? what's happening to us from this environment. I didn't want anything sneaking up on me. You know, I was in great shape, good health, and uh, knock on wood, still am. But, um, you know, I went to work in this clinic and everyone coming in the door was caught in what I call the cycle of trial and error. They, they were going from practitioner to practitioner. You know, they've been to sometimes six or eight different physicians or alternative or whatever. And they were coming to us for something different. 
at our wellness clinic and I worked there for 10 years. So me being the kind of guy I am, I guess, I thought it was a big ripoff uh, that they'd been, what do you mean you've been to six? Again, I'd never really been to a doctor except for some dental work and a couple of sports injuries. Wow. And uh, people wanted answers about what's really wrong with me and what can I do? They didn't just want to get written a prescription for something that they didn't understand. And a matter of fact, in many cases, Jody, they'd had a lab work done and were told nothing was wrong with them. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with you. Your lab work looks normal. So raise your hand if that's ever happened to you. You know, and so what I what I started doing under the physicians there was using some lab work that they said was okay, as long as I didn't diagnose or treat anything specifically. I could only look at the lab work for what we call healing opportunities. Just what's out of balance? What's wrong? What could this person fix? And matter of fact, I learned that as soon as someone lays down a diagnosis, which does require a license, uh, and by the way, it should require a license because the practice of medicine can actually be quite dangerous. You know, prescribing drugs and surgery is a dangerous endeavor and you should be licensed to do those things. We won't go on to the, the, uh, the bad things that could happen, but um, people were coming to us for something different and they didn't want another diagnosis and prescription or, or therapy or something. And so I started using this lab work and I can tell you so many cases where when I quite frankly didn't know what I was doing, I just really was in earnest trying to help people who, who were desperately seeking answers to their problems. And so I'll give you an example, a lady came in Now I worked in a wellness center and I was a personal trainer, nutritionist and myofascial therapist. So I could mm. put my hands on people and do them some trigger point therapy. They might get a chiropractic adjustment after that. And one lady came in, she'd been coming in for a while. She was obviously distraught this day. And she said, uh, when I asked her about it, she, I'm just so sick and tired of being overweight. I'm 40 pounds overweight. And it's just really bothering me. I said, yeah, I can see that. But, you know, what are we going to do about it? And she said, there's nothing I can do about it. I've been on this medication for two years for the hives. She got the hives real bad. And her physician's only answer was medication to suppress the hives, which didn't work when she was working out to a sweat or taking a hot shower, it didn't, didn't work. Anyway, she's very frustrated and she relayed a story. She'd just been to the physician for a checkup and told the doctor that she wasn't happy. And he said, in her words, lady, you could be fat or you could have the hives, take your pick. Wow. She said, and well, yeah, and then it's worse. She <laughs> said, she said, well, that's very depressing. And he said to her, according, according to her, he said, well, then I can write your prescription for some antidepressants. And oh my God. So I could just see the look on her face. And <laughs> to me, being the innocent, just learning guy, I said, well, why don't you find out why you get the hives? And her neck snapped around so hard, I thought she wouldn't need her chiropractic adjustment that day. She, <laughs> you know, she, what? What? What are you saying? And I go, well, you know, anyway, skip moving forward pretty fast. We ran some tests. We found out what she was sensitive to. And within nine days after removing those offenders, she was off her medication. She Amazing. Was working, she was working out to a sweat and she was taking hot showers and started losing weight. So, so that's why early on, I mean, 20 years ago plus, I, I, I knew that lab work was the answer, even for a health coach. Remember, I didn't diagnose anything. Right. All I did is tell her what was offending her systems. And and she did the rest herself. Amazing. I can't believe you brought up hives because that's actually what brought me into functional medicine as well. And health coaching in the first place, I suffered with chronic urticaria or hives for 20, almost 30, 20, 30 years, depending on, I noticed when I cleaned up my diet a little, the hives didn't bother me as much. And that sort of led me on that whole rabbit hole of figuring things out and food that. sensitivities were a huge part of it. But I'm curious, um, in terms of offering labs, I know so many of um, health coaches can't really get access to it. How do you, how do you circumvent that? It's not really a circumvention sort of going around. How do you get away with it? And that kind of thing. There's just a direct right way to do it. And you do need to work for a doctor. Remember I was in a clinic. So the doctors mm -hmm. there were letting me do this under their oversight, 
um, but I learned along the way. Remember, I ran 10,000 laps. I had over 10,000 clients and in a 10 year period and wow. uh, was running these labs. Running these, and I figured out which ones were non-diagnostic, which one was just basically analytical data. Matter of fact, this is an important point, Jody, that some of them are research use only. They're not FDA approved for diagnosis. So doctors can't provide a diagnosis. They can't bill the insurance company if they can't provide a diagnosis. So they're not using them. Yet the data on them is very, very helpful. And we need to be aware. And another consideration is who owns data on a lab work, on lab work? Who owns that data? Well, the, the client, of course, or the person whose blood or saliva, or urine or stool was used to, to derive that data. The lab just does its job, processes it. Here's the results. They have nothing else to do with it. Now, if you're a person and you get lab test result and your doctor says, well, here's my diagnosis or my opinion on that, that person is completely entitled. First of all, that data cannot be withheld from them legally in any way, shape or form. It's their data. If you want a copy of your MRI or your blood test, that's your right to have it for no charge. Now, the and, and they'll provide it if you ask for it most of the time. Uh, now, are, are you not allowed to go get a second opinion? Well, of course you are. It's your data. You can go get a second opinion, third opinion. Those could be medical opinions. I want a second medical opinion or a non-medical opinion, Sim simply opinion. Simply, it's this data analysis. It's just another analysis of the data without providing diagnosis. And again, a lot of the labs are research use only. Uh, that matter of fact, one food sensitivity test that I used early on and still use to this day is still considered research use only, even though you know hundreds of thousands of people have been helped by it. So it's quite remarkable. There's no way that anyone can legitimately withhold data information from you as a person, and you're entitled to share that data with anyone you choose. You can't get a medical opinion unless the person's licensed to give one, but you can get other analysis of that data, no problem. That, that's such a great point. So as health coaches, we're not diagnosing, we're not prescribing, we're not recommending anyone go off medication, but we're educating them about lab work, right? We're educating them about what may be going on with their bodies so they feel empowered to take action and do some lifestyle changes that can make a big difference and can change lab work, right? Oh, yeah. And well, we use the lab data. We could talk about that. But I just wanted to follow up on um, the misconception that that data is somehow secret. Exactly. Only a, a physician could look at it. Only a physician could look at it and provide a medical diagnosis. Is that what you want? Is another diagnosis? Sometimes, yes. If it's a, something dangerous, if it's some downward spiraling the thing that you need to know about. Thank God for physicians and their training and knowledge and experience and, and ability to deliver that diagnosis. There are some bad things out there. Then, and, and um, yet again, um, so by the way, I can't provide that same type of diagnosis. I don't want to. As I mentioned, not that we have any choice, but we, health coaches and allied practitioners who aren't licensed like us. Um, willfully grant a complete monopoly to diagnosing and treating specific things to physicians. That's their realm. That's their backyard. That's where their training and experience and knowledge is all about. And they're licensed because it is a dangerous thing, mm. you know, to prescribe medicine and use scalpels and God knows what else on people. I don't want to disparage physicians, but medical mistakes create or cause at a minimum 250,000 deaths a year in the United States alone, up to I some assume, estimate, some estimates that, of 400,000 deaths created by medical mistakes. So practicing medicine is dangerous and you have to have a license to do it. And we, God bless them, you know, that they're there for what they need to be there for. Not to mention the, the, um, travesty of polypharmacy, like so many medications that, that, you know, sometimes I'll have a client come to me and they're on 25 medications. It's like, you know, can you imagine what their poor liver is doing <laughs> with all that, trying to yeah. process all that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I was, I debated, a, a, a doctor was a pharmaceutical rep one time and 
And he said, well, you guys are making a lot of money on those supplements. <laughs> <laughs> The the the, uh, the drug business in this country, I think, is at about 520 billion per year. Mm -hmm. Supplements are maybe at 20 billion. So right. yeah, you're right. There's a lot of supplements being sold, but it's a teeny, teeny, tiny mm -hmm. fraction relative to what's being spent on drugs. Right, and of um, course, they can be a blessing for so many, but you know, you know, for st stabilization. But um, but of course, there are they're definitely down. Um, downstream effects from so many of them. Um, so, so tell me, like specifically, we got a lot of questions about specific labs. Okay. Um, for example, let's say um, MCV is mean corpuscular volume. That's we see that a lot on labs. And by the way, um, we'll talk about. I just want to talk about reference ranges specifically. When you see something's in reference range, the doctor says, "Oh, you're all set. You're in reference range." I, I'd, I'd rather have you address that first, um, you know, okay, references. That, okay. Yeah. So let's talk about reference ranges and specific Great. analytes, you know, maybe not so much. Okay. Um, but reference ranges are created by usually the large, they're called referencing laboratories, like LabCorp and Quest and these huge, huge, huge companies that look at just tons and tons of data, mega data. And so they will track the results over time for a population uh, that might range from healthy people to unhealthy people. So the range gets pretty wide. Now, if the population's habits and the environment changes and things, let's take cholesterol is probably a better measurement. Cholesterol used to be a, a fairly narrow, or pardon me, a fairly uh, high range. The high was allowable um, and the low was allowable. Let's just say there's a median score i might not be doing a great job here so they come up with a statistical median that's where i meant to start and then a reasonable deviation above or below so here's your median that's just a statistical number and then it's kind of agreed upon as what is allowable above, allowable above that or below that and that's your reference range now let's just say that the population started getting sicker and sicker which you know it has and numbers started becoming more a lot of numbers below that line or a lot of numbers above that line, either way, like, hey, everyone's coming in below the reference range. Well, what does that mean? To us, it means the population is getting sicker, but to st statisticians, it means, well, that's now normal. So the range widens, and that's right. what I meant to say, statistical median, reasonable deviation above and below. But if everyone, because the population gets unhealthier, starts having higher or lower numbers, well, that everyone can't be abnormal. So you just change normal. And then, so when you, that's why when we go to a physician, at least it's my opinion, and they say you're normal, it just means you're within the reference range. It doesn't mean healthy. You could be at the bottom or at the top, and that could be a problem. It could be indicating and pointing a finger somewhere, take blood sugar. My God, if you're always at the top, and another thing where blood sugar might be used um, is that no one's really tracking the changes in you. So you might come up normal, but you're you're at that median normal. You know, you're in reference range normal. Now you, you go and get checked again the next year or the year after, and it's a little higher. You're still normal. And the next year after that, you're a little higher and it's still normal. And next year that you're, you're even higher. You're at maybe now the top of the reference range. And you might get a warning, but generally no one's really tracking that because we, our insurance changes, our doctor changes, our, you know, um, even if you like your doctor, you can't keep your doctor, you know, because your insurance changes and he's not in that plan. So, so, so no one's really tracking this over time. And that's what health coaches get to do. They could, not that I want to teach, uh, teach people to track blood uh, sugar over a period of time. It's it's so far from what we actually do, but that's an example of using reference ranges why they don't work. Yeah, I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen, you know, year after year, they get their hemoglobin A1C taken or their fasting insulin or, or you know, glucose, and you see it going up and up and up every year. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they're pre-diabetic. <laughs> it's like, that didn't happen out of nowhere. If you look at your no. labs, there's so oh. much you can do to prevent before it actually happens, right? Perfect example. And we are basically in the prevention and anti-aging business. You know, mm -hmm. if someone has, if they just got off a plane from 
from West Africa and their temperature is 105 and they're bleeding from the eyeballs, please don't call your nutritionist. You know, go right. and get the urgent attendant heroic care that you need to save your life. And so what you just described is how uh, the observations we make over, you know, can be uh, capitalized on over time. If the, you know, because we're testing the hormones and the immune system and digestion and detoxification. And that's where, you know, lifestyles led to poor results, poor health. You feel like crap. Um, well, you can live yourself out of that too. So again, we can make these observations as long as there's time to capitalize on them. If you um, just got, uh, became the victim of a drive-by shooting, there's no observation I could make that would be helpful. You know, about, I mean, you're not interested in balancing your hormones when you just got shot. You go somewhere because the downward spiral for that person is so contracted. There's nothing I can do or say or, or observe. And so we really understand our place and it's a big place. It's really the first choice. You know, I think about it this way a lot now, Jody, is that, you know, drugs and surgery should be the alternative, like your last choice. You know, really healthy living should be your first choice. Absolutely. There are a few questions here, Reed, that I want to kind of go through. And um, one was, you know, what credentials do you need or qualifications do you need to have access to functional lab tests? And I think, I think your, your school allows that. You have a set up so that people can actually access labs through your school. Is that correct? Well, there's a program that, that I created. It's one of the very first direct-to-consumer programs. And those are very popular today, by the way. We're certainly not the only ones. So Thank goodness matter of fact, for those. I, yeah. I think we were one of the first. And what we did is gave the client access mm -hmm. to direct to consumers. Consider, and now LabCorp does it, Quest does it. There's at least 40 companies, last time I checked, that are providing direct to consumer. So health coaches can find their way to use those mm -hmm. to help their clients. As long as you're not diagnosing specific thing don't diagnose anything you're only allowed and you should be highly trained and skilled at two things one is looking at the data your your data analysis is designed to uh, identify healing opportunities you want to look for what something the person could do to change remember they're pretty much in our world their lifestyle and their environment and some genetics all contributed to those, let's say, lousy results. So recognizing that's really important. Again, we're not diagnosing and gonna treat a, a disease. Uh, we're looking for what can they change? And you know, the data often is very motivational. But people, yeah, yeah, I know I need to diet and eat better. <laughs> <laughs> eat better and exercise more and try to go to bed on time. So lifestyle we all know is really important. But when you have numbers in front of you that show you why you feel so lousy, your hormones are out of balance, your cortisol DHEA is out of balance. That's not a diagnosis. It's saying you're in a catabolic state and your body's breaking down. That's, there's no DX code for that. It's just data analysis. And the, the person goes, wow, no wonder I feel so lousy. We get, we get um, all the time, and I've trained over 3,000 people. 1,000 are actually serious practitioners or um, you know a thousand did it kind of for their own edification at least they're healthier and they're educating their families and things and there's another thousand I would call um, hobbyists and those ones well anyway we, we uh, um, the point I'm trying to make is that uh, we don't diagnose anything we use the data for identifying healing opportunities and then we suggest to people what they might do to improve their lifestyle. General recommendations, which have been fully uh, vetted out by the Supreme Court of the United States, by the way, on what a non-licensed person can and cannot say. Right, and so you make that clear in, in the school as well. Is that something that you talk about? At, uh, at we camp? teach straight up anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, behind the lab, saliva testing, urine testing, stool testing, um, for the most part. And we have advanced courses in blood testing and all kinds of things. But uh, the basic course teaches you how to look for these healing opportunities. 
in the hidden area. So hidden is H-I-D-D-E-N. It mm -hmm. stands for hormone, immune, digestion, detoxification, energy production, and nervous system, like just autonomic balance, you know, and so H-I-D-D-E-N. Um, oh, and yeah. when you identify healing opportunities in those areas and clinically correlate, which is a point I was trying to make a minute ago, you have to be able to identify these healing opportunities. But more important, it's whose test results are these? You know, how does this apply to a, uh, one person? Mm -hmm. And so that's the deal. Right. And I'm, I'm glad you brought up the, the different tests that you do teach, because I know in our group, we always have people that say, oh, I have a client who has scleroderma or, you know, something like, what do I do for that? And I'm like, wow, you know, a full-blown autoimmune disease, you really need a rich understanding of lab work. You need to have access to stool testing. You need to have access to things. And, you know, of course, the foundational stuff that health coaches that we do is important to their healing, but it can only get them so far sometimes if something's really entrenched. And so to be able to look at their lab work and understand what's going on in their, in their system just makes a difference between them feeling okay and them feeling fantastic, you know, and that's, that's what we all want for our clients, right? We want them coming out saying, oh my gosh, you just helped me. Like, I feel the best I've ever felt in my, in my adult life, you know, that kind of thing. That's what you want. That real, um, you know, the real, uh, just to be super effective at what you do. Right. Yeah. It's, it's really amazing. Um, you know, how effective they are. I could give you other cases um, where, you know, a lady in our office, she was uh, coming in regularly, doing very well. And she asked me, do you work with kids? And I said, well, I've, I've raised four and I am a, I've been a football coach for 15 years, youth football. So yeah, I've, I've worked with a lot of kids. Why? She said, well, my kid's apparently misbehaving at school. He's poking at the other kids. He's not paying attention. He's not doing well. And they want to put him on drugs, just flat out. The school told her to put her kid on drugs. Now, what they were looking for was a certain behavior. So I understand you know, why. But um, I asked her, well, do you think, and by the way, the drug of choice back then was Ritalin. And for that kind of a thing. And I said, well, do you think your son has a Ritalin deficiency? <laughs> Yeah, she 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 didn't laugh. So much. <laughs> no, no, I don't think he has a riddle in deficiency. I said, well, you know, what do you think the problem is? He, I don't know. He just he really is kind of fidgety and things like that. I said, well, there's some underlying cause. Why don't we run a couple of tests and see now, you know, looking forward, I can't predict who this is going to help the most. But looking backwards, we have case after case after case just like this. So we found out he was sensitive to some to some things, got rid of those things. And within three weeks, Jody, and everyone listening, the principal of the school tracked me down, called me and said, what did you put Billy on? Right. I said, well, we didn't put him on anything, sir. You know, like there's no magic pill. What we did is find out what was irritating his nervous system. You know, mostly bad food, things like that. And I could just continuously tell you story after story like that uh, with asthma, with skin conditions, mm -hmm. with joint pain, with tiredness and fatigue. With, back then, really popular was fibromyalgia, too. Right. You know, like now that's kind of taken third or fourth place to these other sort of fed diseases or diagnoses. And so now, by the way, I, I'm not putting down diagnoses. I'm just saying that um, as soon as you do diagnose something, you're likely leaving a lot of other things off the table. So you could give someone a diagnosis and prescribe a treatment and they could go do that and feel a little bit better, but you're basically encouraging them to ignore the other dozen things they could do to improve their health, you know, and, uh, and doctor's visits become uh, an exercise in um, looking at the lab work and seeing how it's changed. In other words, kind of treating the paper. And once, once, and hopefully some of you will identify with this, your original complaints that you went in for kind of take a back seat to what does the paper say? You know, because th that's just how the modern medical system works. It's getting those numbers right. And um, when you're singly focused on one diagnosis or two, um, you, again, you're leaving a lot of healing opportunities off the table. Absolutely. 
Um, there's a couple questions here, Reed, about um, Moira uh, wants to know how long is the course? How long is FDN? Well, again, we're, we're not here to sell the course, but you know, <laughs> it's a self-paced course. Uh, I've had people do it in four months. I've had people take eight. The average is probably, you know, seven and a half, eight, you know, That's great. but we give you a year and we encourage you along the way. It's you're not left alone because it's self-paced doesn't mean that just means you can go through faster if you want to. Um, and so it's, it's remarkable the amount of support we've just continuously added more and more and more mentoring, mentoring sessions. Um, everyone going through the course does their own lab work on themselves because that's the best that. way to learn it. Yep. Uh, when, 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 you know, labs are always after me to, you should be using these labs. Okay. Well, send me a couple of kits. And if you want me to vet it out, I will. Matter of fact, I have a whole vetting team and sometimes we all run the test. Um, we're, we're even doing research for at least one lab right now where they sent us 150 kits mm -hmm. to test a whole lot of people. And so, so we're, we're vetting out these things. We're, we're learning what the right labs are. And we can teach you the five or six basic labs um, along with the anatomy, physiology, biochemistry. Not only that, but the protocols, what to do about it. That's so I can't cool. help but mention our DRESS -E program. Mm -hmm. And that's the solution to the healing opportunities we find within the HIDDEN areas. So we run the labs on H-I-D-D-E-N. That's a lot of healing opportunities. Jody, that's an entire constellation, not just picking one thing like SIBO or you know whatever some doctor has diagnosed. It's all of the constellation of healing opportunities within all those areas. Now you can work on them all simultaneously with the DRESS program, D-R-E-S-S. That's diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, and supplementation. So it's a holistic program that doesn't treat anything specifically. We could never practice medicine because there's nothing we treat individually by itself. But the overall effect of our program is beneficial for every cell, tissue, organ, system. The entire organism just gets healthier on a you know functional level. That's great. I, um, I'm curious also about... Um... Can people just join any time and, and start the school or are there certain? Yes, go sign up today. <laughs> okay, good. No, that's good. And actually, if you're going to sign up today, use the coupon that Reed has been so oh, generous yeah, that's to right. yeah, provide. I don't know who authorized, know because, who authorized um, that. <laughs> Terry will put that in the, in the comments again below. Make sure you scroll for yeah, that. My... But it's $750 off, folks. So we really appreciate that. Uh, and so Brooke wants to know if there are other programs through this school for people who have already been through on uh, different functional medicine training, if they've already been through, are there, are there programs they can attend or advanced classes they can go right to? We have the advanced, uh, classes and yeah, I think, I think my team's ready to, uh, handle those inquiries as well and direct them towards, you know, some specific, uh, we, we, we consider those postgraduate. So by the way, I'm not a school, I'm a private course, you know, it's, it's, a um, it's not accredited by any educational institution. We do have accreditation from some health and wellness organizations, quite a few, as a matter of fact, but no government, um, educational institution would consider us a school. We're, we're a private course. And so, uh, that's an important distinction for certain reasons. But um, you can join, uh, enroll. Basically, you're enrolling in the course. You're going to go through it at your own pace. We're going to be there to serve you along the way. You'll run labs in yourself. You'll work on yourself because that's the best way. And we'll prepare you with, again, all the, the looking for the hidden stressors, all, everything you need to know about the labs, what they tell you about a person, how to correlate it with a real person, then all the protocols to apply, again, on it customized sort of uh, customized basis um there's no one diet for instance that fits everybody that's insane um and not only that but the business model it teaches you how to practice in business as an independent entrepreneur you're a health entrepreneur so you could join the world of health entrepreneurship or lastly you can go work for a physician there's physicians now because i'm in some networking groups they will only hire our graduates they've tried graduates from other uh, schools and um a lot of those people are working too but 
they're they're finding out that the the level of education we provide is what they want. They want someone to understand the phraseology and terminal, you know, and not just be that. Uh, you know, you get the point. So the answer to the um, question. Um, <clears throat> Uh, there's other great schools. We would consider them to be um, um, good to have in your back pocket. But come and get, first of all, it's the only course I teach. So you won't find my uh, thousands and thousands of lab reviews in any other course. Um, my perspective also is always to watch out for the people. You know, I'm a, I'm a blue collar. Uh, type you know um i have worked hard my entire life and when i latched onto this i really did my homework um we're 10 years in the office and uh you won't get that kind of experience anywhere else i noticed some courses being taught by people who who just took another course or two and then kind of combined it and and now they're teaching something i'm sure it's very useful i'm sure it's a good thing um get as much training as you can uh, but there is nothing like ours as far as in the streets, practical, how to help Mrs. Smith or Mr. Jones who are really suffering, caught in that cycle of trial and error. Um, they're, they, they're not happy with anything else they've had. Um, they don't want another diagnosis. They want to know what's really wrong. That's, uh, that's really a good point. Um, and I'm, I'm curious also, when you say protocols, what if there are deviations, because you all know there's a lot of bio-individuality. What if we try one of the protocols that you follow and it's not necessarily working? And I know for most people it probably will because, you know, you're doing the right thing, but you know, as you know, everybody's different. What do you do for that? Is there support that's, around that? No, that's a great question. And hmm. so regardless of a person's, let's say, diagnosis, they could come to us and they've been diagnosed with this or that. We're, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to look at our healing opportunity, find out what else is going on, again, within the hormone, immune, digestion, detoxification, energy production, and the autonomic, the nervous system. Uh, that's what spills hidden. And when you then apply healing principles to all of those areas, you just get healthier. And so whatever diagnosis you had um, might disappear. We've seen it go, go away completely. Just, well, that wasn't it either really wasn't the case or it was just part of this, this milieu of dysfunction, sometimes very far upstream. So that goes away, whatever your diagnosis was, because everything gets cleaned up at once. Or if there's something persistent, well, that's why we have doctors. We have oversight from physicians. Again, there could be certain things going on where the downward spiral is very contracted. In which case, these observations we make about what they should do in a long term, you know, your preventative and anti aging stuff, well, that doesn't help if you have some uh, really serious uh, a tumor growing on your brain. You know, that, and, and so um, we hope you don't have a tumor growing on the brain, um, <laughs> you know, and we're the perfect, but we're the perfect grounding program if you do. So if you do have a contracted medical condition, that's what doctors are for. Uh, we would just be providing an amazing holistic grounding program in the background. It will, we accept our spot as the junior partner in that relationship, fine. Okay. Uh, Lynn has a question about what are some good basic tests to run for a good view of overall health? I think you're going to say probably don't run any tests unless you understand them, <laughs> but, uh, but it, once you understand them, what's some good basic tests to run? Well, thank you for uh, preempting me on the caveat that you got to have the training right? Um, because even the labs don't use exactly our interpretation. So there's labs that you could, that might let you run a test. Um, they, everyone has a, a direct to consumer program now. So you could get your eyes on one of your client's lab tests. And uh, that's, you know, your agreement with the client is, I'm gonna help you. Um, and there are, there's some lab data that I'd like to see. Uh, it's just, it's not a medical interpretation. It's a, um, just an analysis of the data as to what healing opportunities there are and what you could be doing to uh, remedy that, make that better. And so, um, we check the hormones through saliva testing mostly and some dried urine. 
we check the immune system. Some of that's included in saliva, believe it or not, secretory IgA. That could also be looked at on stool. Um, digestion, we're looking at markers. Again, physicians don't pay much attention to because there's no diagnosis code they could put on your insurance bill. So things like endocrine, um, we look at lipid peroxides, we look at uh, eight hydroxydeoxyguanosine. There's a mouthful for you. Um, and uh, urinary bile acids and bile acid sulfates and things like that. These are just indicators of dysfunction. They're not diagnostic. Matter of fact, again, some of the tests are research use only. They're not approved by the FDA for diagnosis. So how could we possibly be diagnosing anything? It's just another analysis of data. And that's yeah. all it is. And so I'm trying to answer your question about which tests, uh, saliva testing for hormones, a peak into the immune system, urine testing for digestive markers, uh, liver function, that's your main detoxifying organ, of course. Wouldn't you like to know if it's congested? See, that's a different view than how a physician might. They're looking for uh, signs of hepatitis or cirrhosis or some other liver pathology you know we, that's their backyard we're looking is it is it working well you know could you could it do better you know we all take these supplements to help our livers out um but you know how bad is it wouldn't you like to see a measurement of that and and we have direct measurement of liver function things like that again through uh through urine um and it's very convenient by the way the testing could be we can ship these kits around the world uh, to your client. You, we don't give the kits to the coach. They go directly to the client. Remember, it's a direct to consumer. And so that's how that works. Um, and we're just one, but mine is the only one that I know of, by the way, my direct to consumer program, you have to be certified to use it because I'm very careful, you know, hurting the cats about who gets to use this data. It's, it needs to be done right. So you gave the caveat, um, you have to be trained, but I would, I would look at saliva, urine, uh, stool for markers, uh, again, hormone, immune, digestion, detoxification. Um, and so there are some more, Is it dependent maybe. upon what the, what the client's presenting with, or you run all these tests no, right off? No, because um, that's a mistake that a lot of practitioners, even functional medicine practitioners do. Remember, mm -hmm. there's two different sandboxes you know we're not in their world it you really need to get that we're not there to diagnose anything especially specifically you know we're we're there looking at healing opportunities so physicians to answer your question in, in my usual roundabout way um they might hear symptoms tired fatigue got some weight i can't lose um, my hair's thinning my um i'm constipated i got cold or numb extremities and that just sounds so much like thyroid points the finger right at uh slow metabolism so thyroid dysfunction now um physician would go okay that's the kind of clinical diagnosis sounds like thyroid run a thyroid test yep found your problem you're hypothyroid and here's something to help you but it also is gauge more on just getting the numbers on the paper to change so we would we would not run that test or think that way that's why we run multiple tests for a whole collage a whole uh, uh constellation of healing opportunities we don't want to follow that pattern because it doesn't work you know because that's the diagnosis and as soon as you say oh i found your problem it's hypothyroidism here's your pills that person might actually feel better but you didn't change anything. You didn't correct any other associated dysfunction. Or well, the reason and why they might be hypothyroid in the first place, right? The reason why you're hypothyroid in the first place. Right. And often it's it's a natural response to stress. Mm. You know, your body wants to hibernate. So it slows metabolism down on purpose. Right. Yep. The results you're getting on that paper aren't the problem. They're the result of the problem. Exactly. And so that's where we go, sometimes very far upstream. Now I could confuse you even more if you want, you know, and tell sure. you that that the well these these uh, um, these hidden stressors, dysfunctions, and healing opportunities upstream, they're also crashing into each other, having an effect upon each other, 
and some of that can't be singly measured. So that's why the training is so critical. Um, well, you know, sounds if you very took, comprehensive, yeah. Well, it's comprehensive in nature. It has to be not complicated, just comprehensive. Right. And I imagine also just in terms of compliance for your clients, when they see the data and you explain to them what is going on, your the compliance goes way up. And I know health coaches sometimes in the group will say, my client's ghosting me, what's going on? I don't know, you know? And it's like, my heart goes out to that health coach because I was there before I learned functional medicine. And now it's like, people can't wait to meet with me because they know that I can explain things to them and understand. I have a deep, rich understanding of, of um, how to help them. Yeah, so. well, that's, that's uh, you just said a mouthful there, you know, um, lab results help people be compliant. Well, think about it. If, if your doctor said, hey, um, your, your liver's got this big, ugly scar, you know, it's all uh, fibrous and it's, you know, cirrhotic, basically, you have to quit drinking or you're going to die. That's an objective finding that totally changes your behavior, doesn't it? Like, I'm going to, or you die, you know, you keep drinking and you die. So they're getting people to change behavior by making observations. And, and we do too. Um, you know, ours usually aren't as dramatic as that, but but you get the point. When you show someone their, how their hormones are out of balance, and that's why you feel lousy. That's why you don't have the energy and libido and can't lose the weight and just, just you know, you're moody or, or, you know, foggy thinking and, you know, all of these things that people have that most physicians don't have an answer for, they're considered vague complaints. You know, blood work looks normal. So, um, so there's no diagnosis, you know, um, Here's a pill that'll make you forget about it or feel better, but um, come back when you're really sick. <laughs> so we don't tell them come back when you're really sick. We say you're, you know, you're dysfunctional enough for us to apply some principles of healing and help you. Right. So again, it's two backyards. There, we're, we have, and and there's a there's a definite uh, a bridge between the two, and we own the bridge because physicians generally don't work on the bridge, you know, on the, on the lifestyle factors, they are hiring more and more health coaches. That's a good thing. Great. Um, I know that uh, Jennifer wants to know how long the coupon's good for. She's doing another program right now and she's considering it. I don't even know if you know the answer to that read, but I think, I think it's uh, we're going to be offering it for a while, right? It's a, it's um uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't haven't really talked about that much. We're happy to offer the discount. Um, but what's holding you back? You know, I mean, we don't want people taking food out of their kids mouths to pay for the course. Uh, <laughs> I have had someone sell their TV, you know, to pay for the what's course. What's more but, important, right? But you know, yeah, so you, your priorities get them get them straightened out. I will tell you this, that if you're already a practitioner, um, we're going to take you to a whole new level. You can charge more. You'll get right. your money back faster than what you're doing now, most likely. Um, and it's just because you're going to get results and people pay for results. They also will refer you more. So you're going to be able to spend less time marketing. Personally, not a very good marketer. I, I, I'm not a bad salesman, but I'm marketing. Eh. You know, um, the only marketing I ever did Remember I told you in the beginning, I, I built my practice with a pager and a fax machine. <laughs> and because I went out and lectured, I went out and lectured. I got a lot of customers that way. Everyone wants to do it from sitting behind their desk now. And, um, you know, we have, we have experts around to help. Um, anyway, I don't know if I answered the question. Or not. No, I, I think you did. Um, you know, and, uh, I, uh, I actually, since I learned functional medicine from the time I was struggling as a health coach, I actually was able to raise my rates 800% over what oh, wow. I was charging in the beginning. So it's, it's definitely worth the investment to do a functional medicine training program. In my opinion, it's a, the, a huge difference. Um, so return on investments, huge. Uh, so, so many questions here. There's a specific question. I don't know if you want to answer specifics, but someone asked about a patient or client who did a vitamin D test and it was 101 after two weeks did a fingertip test on her own and it came back to 33. How is that possible? 
different so, tests produce different results. And, you know, there's some controversy. I was just reading um, recently uh, about vitamin D testing and how, how valid it is. There's different ways. Um, and if it's a hydroxy or, or not, um, maybe yeah, two so, tests. And, you know, even a lab that I work with is developing a new test that's supposed to be even more accurate, or at least just get me in the ballpark, you know, something reliable. Um, the fact is most people are deficient and uh, it's been proven to be a great, um, you know, risk. It will lower your risk for uh, serious illness, especially that little virus thing that was going around um, and, and stuff like that. So we're all very conscious of it. Now, if you live above the 39th parallel, which goes through like about New York, across the country. So half this country basically is all deficient. You can't get enough sunlight. Fortunately, I live in Southern California and get plenty, but I still take some vitamin D, you know, and I don't measure it that often. I measured it a couple of years ago. It was okay, you know, but I wanted it higher. You know, the, the, the test result there, the hundred, that's pretty damn high. I think it's too um, high. It becomes degrees. immunosuppressive at yeah. that rate, right? So. I got a feeling, I don't know if that was through, you know, lab core quest or one of the big, big places or some other lab, you know, the finger stick sounds interesting. I really like finger stick testing because it's so convenient. You can do it in your home. You get these little popper things and you pop, you know, lancets and, and you, the, the trick is to press them harder than you want to before you let it go and get a good stick. Right. And, and then there's different types you can, um, take the 25 versus the 125 hydroxy um, test. So it can be a little bit, it, they can read differently. You could try taking both side by side and see what happens there. That could explain it or lab, there's sometimes lab error that happens too. So yeah, again, different labs, you're going to see different results and, and I don't know which what they were measuring, but I just, I just last. Oh, and week, the other thing, can I just mention one other thing? Yeah. That person may have taken a vitamin D supplement right before their lab, right before their lab work too. And what you do want to do is stop the supplements for three days prior. So the first test, they may have been at a hundred because they were taking their, you know, 10,000 IUs of vitamin D. They took the test, it's way up there. And then you know, then they stopped taking the vitamin D, took a finger stick test a, um, a week later, and it came way down because that's probably more their baseline. But the supplements in their bloodstream were making that that marker higher. So that's another thing I'm thinking. Correct me if I'm yeah, wrong. No, <laughs> that's fantastic. I'm so glad you you filled in the blank there because that was an important you know, factor. Um, um, you know, if you're measuring things like that, but but I'll just throw in here that. Um, Within the last two weeks, I've read two articles. One, just totally extolling, you know, vitamin D is the the best test you could run for, you know, immune system lowering risk and uh, defense against, uh, you know, COVID and these kind of things. And another research, really well respected guy I know personally, said it's all a bunch of crap. You can't get a good measurement of real vitamin D, the the one that's being used by the in the cells. And so, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm still for testing and taking the supplement and lowering risk and getting sunshine. For and sure. yeah. Um, so there's some other questions here, but uh, one of your staff, Kay, just put in the comments, you can download the dress guide, the D-R-E-S-S -S guide. Um, and Terry, if it's not already on Facebook, if you could put also that in the comments below, that can be helpful to people to download the, how to get the, um, dress for health success guidebook. And that that's great. I'm, I appreciate you putting that in the, in the comments. Kay. Yeah. My Kay, staff's Kay on Marie. there somewhere. Yeah. Um, and put that in the box. That's a guide again, it stands for diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, supplementation. Mm -hmm. And over the years working in the office, it just, it just evolved. Um, what do I need to send these people home to do, you know, coming in the office, isn't that helpful? It's what you do between visits that matters. Absolutely. So what do I do between visits? And it just so slowly evolved as we figured out what, how to, how an individual can find the right diet for them. So D diet rest, you know, there's lots of ways to rest besides sleep. You know, during the day, I tend to meditate and do things to rest my 
uh, energy, my uh, my brain, you know, and get the news off my mind and, and different things like that. You need a rest from all I that, need that crap. these days, <laughs> you know, and then exercise goes without saying, you know, right. sitting is the new smoking. Mm -hmm. um, and then supplements, I don't have my own brand, but I know a lot about them. And um, then stress reduction um, is just, there's so, so many kinds of stress. A lot of it we don't even know we're subject to, like Absolutely. the environment where I started. Mm. Well, I appreciate you coming on today. Are there any final words for our group? And if, and if um, your question wasn't answered, maybe Reed could stay in the group or his staff could stay in and answer some individual questions. Just type them in the comments below on Facebook. And also um, those of you who are on our email list will get a replay sent to your email. If you're not on our email list for this group, message Terry, my assistant. You can see her in the comments below. And she will, um, she will go ahead and put you on our email list. And we always send replays of our talks because, you know, Facebook algorithms, sometimes you never see what's going on. So we'll send you that. Um, and if anyone has any additional questions, perhaps, uh, again, his staff can answer. If you could give us some hearts, if you appreciate having, um, you know, uh, speakers like Reed come into our group, I think it's, it's so helpful. And we really appreciate you coming on today, Reed. Any final thoughts about um, anything that we talked about? lab work or anything you want to leave with our group uh, i get so many things i could say my dad <laughs> always told me early to bed early to rise work like hell and advertise <laughs> but i don't know if that's meaningful i, I get up every day <laughs> thankful just glad i get up or i do get up very early try to get in some work uh before anyone else is even up you know, and that way I could take off in the afternoons and live the life I want, you know, do, do things I love to do, but you got to start early to get that done and be grateful, thankful, um, count your blessings every day. That's awesome. Uh, and we're getting a lot of love here. A lot of thanks. Um, Terry, you grabbing some of those emails in the comments here. Uh, and yeah, I'll just say to Joe, if Joe could stay, um, she's in the chat room there. Uh, she's my staff, but I can't, I've got to get to another meeting, Jody. So thank you. A okay. Million for having thanks me so on. much, everyone. We'll sign off now. I think this is a good place to leave, but anyway, take care everybody and Reed. Thanks again for coming on. We really thank appreciate you. It. Great. Right. Wonderful time talking with you. Take care. Bye-bye.